Okay, uh, we're going to show a little bit about what some of the fitment uh, issues have been uh, during our trial fitting exercise. So this is a uh, 14 tooth sprocket here, just a, a standard one that was bought in the motorcycle shop. And if you look right here, you'll see that I can only turn it a certain amount and it drags against this slider guide. Um, so that's that's the one that we, we just bought brand new. I'm going to put an older one on here. Let me get it. This is an older one that I had in my toolbox and I wanted to see if there was a difference in the diameters. Um, And get it on here. So that this is the older one. There is a slight difference in the diameter, but it's a very very light touch. Um, the point being that there's a difference in the diameters of the sprockets, and probably going to have to take care. Uh, either one will wear a groove in this, so I don't think it's going to be a clearance issue. Um, on the clutch slave cylinder. We now have clearance, but we didn't have it before, and this is what we, what we were looking for, is something that would allow us to be able to rotate this banjo joint to a safe location. Um, and basically, when we tighten these down, all three of them, it would seize this banjo joint so it couldn't turn. And uh, if one were to force it, there's a risk of, of stripping threads uh, here in the, uh, uh, the bleeder screw for the slave cylinder or possibly into the engine uh, threads, which really would be a bad news thing. So our solution was to go in here and start, find out where the bind was and start grinding away to get rid of it. And I'm going to take that apart to show you here. So the slave cylinder fits into the machined hole there. And what was happening is th this part of the banjo right here, this bulge, I, I think if you can see it here, looking down this edge here, you can see that this banjo sticks out further than the edge of the slave cylinder. And that's got a interference conflict with the engine case right here. So what we did was we ground around this, this is the adapter ring for the stator, was we ground around that uh, and, and kept trying and trying again, um, but we couldn't get it to clean up without pulling out this tapered screw. I'm going to go pull that out now. So this tapered screw, which at least in terms of what we are trying to do, doesn't seem to serve any specific purpose. It may with some other uh, setup. Putting this engine in a different combination so ultimately what made this actually work was to take this this countersink headed screw you can see here it's got a taper on the bottom here and it was about uh, you know it was maybe a uh, a third uh, larger diameter than it is now. We ground down the outer diameter here and then it was still too thick, the uh, edge was too thick so we then ground uh, down to the edge and made it sort of a dome shape so we preserved this um, socket in order to be able to get it screwed in and torqued down properly. Once we ground this down this and then compensated again with this 
uh, grinding here, we were able to have freedom of movements of this banjo joint and still be able to get this screw in uh, tightly enough to be able to torque it to a proper setting, which I believe is um, it's 10 newton meters, I believe. So that fit, try, fit, try, fit, try, figure out what the problem was, go do some grinding and whatnot. We spent about three and a half hours on that. But now that we know what to do, um, it's probably a 15 or 20 minute fix in order to get that to work properly. All right. Okay. So our next uh, fitment issue had to do with the head stay here. Ordinarily, the head stay is turned over um, on the stock bike, um, but uh, because of the size of the cylinder uh, and the positioning of this um, head stay, uh, this it, you can't reuse it as it was in stock. So we had to the by playing with it, we figured out we could turn it around upside down, it wouldn't interfere with anything, and put a new set of holes in it right here um, and bolt it up to the head stay. So that was also another trial fit, trial fit, trial fit situation. Um, but that's, that's working fine now. Um, we haven't yet decided whether we want to take off the original uh, mounting holes or not. Um, We'll think about it, but it's not causing a problem, so we're going to leave it that way for now. Uh, one more issue that uh, I just want to point out quickly is here on the exhaust manifold, this Allen headed screw right here is extremely difficult to get at with a straight shot. Um, you're going to have to use something like a ball headed uh, Allen screw to get in there. Uh, and I don't know how you're going to torque it down uh, comfortably other than just by hand and feel. Um, but you can't get in there with uh, anything that's straight. It's, it's just uh, too, it comes too close to the frame and it's, um, there's just no, no way to really get in there comfortably. So something like one of these ball headed uh, Allen wrenches and uh, fit that in there and maybe maybe some kind of a wrench out here so you can get enough beef on it to torque it down. Um, but that's the only one of the four that uh, is problematic. Um, I think that's it on this side of the engine in terms of little fitment problems that we had. It took us a while to figure out.